Welcome back everyone to another video. So in this video we will check on fetching data from Firestore and we will also have the appropriate checks to see if we are admin or not and display the appropriate UI for that. Uh, the UI will be very simple, we will just display a center widget with a text. So this series will not be so much focused on UI uh, because many of you are asked to just for the simple logic of everything. So I will display that. So before we begin, use a message from Skillshare. Get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. After a while and you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. So this is the page that we have. When we sign up, we can also see that we have this user.send email verification and also navigate.of pop. Uh, we will just remove this. Uh, pop was a misplacement because we have this push replacement now. And sale e send email verification is just an extra step that we don't have to do in this tutorial. Uh, you will probably have to implement this in your video or in your um, application, uh, but it's not necessary for now. You can just uh, check if your email is verified when you sign in later. So let's just remove this. And also, we don't have to await and put that in a variable, so we'll remove that user as well. Like that. And that's just a fix from last episode. So let's go to the homepage right here. Uh, actually, first, before we do anything, we will have to implement Cloud Firestore right here. And this can be found if I drag this over here. And we scroll in a bit. Uh, this is the uh, Cloud Firestore package. So if you go to installing, uh, just check so you have the latest dependencies. Um, in case I do not have that for um, this time of the video. And you can see all the setup and implementation. Uh, we don't have to do any of this as we have already added the uh, ALF uh, package. So this would be the same. So we will take the import message, so you can also see here how you set the data and how you fetch data. data. Um, maybe I will do a set data in another video, so let me know if you want to see that. Uh, for now I'll just fetch data and see the role, right? Let's take this back. So there we have the dependency of Firestore. We go back to home. So first off we will implement the package or import the package. And then in the body, we will use a stream builder. So this stream builder will just listen to a document snapshot. And just to make this more clear, uh, let's go back here. Here is my database. And I will remove so you can't connect to this database while the video is up. So as you can see, I have created a collection called users. Uh, the user ID comes from authentication, so if I go back to authentication, we can see that I have testing here. And I just hit this copy user ID. I go back to database. And that's what's displayed right there, right? And we have like age, name, and then the role. So the role I'm just setting to a string. You can set this to ints as well, or booleans, or whatever you want. Um, but I've used it to a string for now. So right now we have a stream builder. We will listen to a document and that's what the user is. It's just a normal document. And we will create the stream. So for the stream, we will, let's close this so we can see a bit more. We'll call Firestore and the instance of it. Then go to collection users. If I take this put it beside. We can maybe be a bit more clear. Maybe not. There we go. So we go to the users collection, which is here. And we go to the document, with is, which is user ID, which is this one. And then we just listen to this or fetch this uh, data from that document. Put that back. So as you can see, we are calling snapshots. So what snapshot is, uh, we can see it's just a stream of document snapshots, right? 
So for the next step, we'll impl implement the builder. So the builder takes a context and a async snapshot. And then we just pass in the type again. Um, and then we just call it whatever you want. I will just call it snapshot because it makes sense to me. So inside this builder, we have a couple of things we can do with snapshot, right? So for the first thing we will do is that we'll check if we have an error. Um, so we will just display the error in a simple text at the top if we have any error. Probably you won't see this message, but this is for a backup if it's not working. Uh, we can create a switch. So snapshot also have these different connection states. So we can listen to the connection state uh, in a switch. And I have just created a case of connection state waiting. So this is all documented in the Firestore uh, PubSwick. So you can also check that. Um, and I will link that in the description. So we can listen to the connection state. And for now, I'm just listening to the waiting and will return a simple text, which is loading. And you can also display the um, linear progress indicator or the spinner if you want. I will just display that. And also, I have a default statement. So there's uh, a lot of other states you can listen to, but I will just keep it simple. Uh, we have the default, which will just uh, display the data of the snapshot we're getting, and then get the field name. Uh, right. So let's just display that. So hit Control S, so we can see that it loads. You can see there we have Bob, and if I take this page over right here. We can see that the user has the name of Bob. So one cool thing with using a stream belay is that it's listening all the time, right? So if you see up here, maybe I could um, set the style a bit bigger. Or I can just do it like this. Maybe I could not do that. That's a bummer. Well. At this, you can see probably see the name right there. And if I change the name to something like class, and I update that, and of course I'm unable to save, so let's just reload the page. If I take Bob again, let's change it to Victor or something. And we update that field, we can see that it displays right away in the application. So this is very handy if you are changing data a lot and you want to display the data as it changes. Uh, so this implements a real world application of um, active data, right? So right now we have used this snapshot uh, to display the name, which is not that nice. So what if we want to check right there? What if we want to check the role, right? We want to check the role. If it's admin, we will display admin. And if it's not admin, we will say something else, right? So we will create a method called check role. We will just pass in the snapshot data. So let's create that check role method. Uh, I will just return a center. Uh, so this check role takes a document snapshot. That's what the snapshot.data is. We'll call it snapshot again. So if the snapshot.data role is equals to admin, we'll return the admin page. If it's not, we'll return the user page. So if we have the role of admin, we will return the design or the UI for the admin page. And you can also create uh, fully stateless widgets if you want to, or stateful widgets. Uh, I'll just use methods to return a simple UI instead. That's not the most optimal way, but it's a easier way to show. So for the admin page, we'll just create a center. And we will return, so if we, are, if we have the role, we'll just display our role. So this will display admin, and then I'll just add this plus sign and page. 
Uh, and you can also do string interpolation if you want to. This was just easier for me to add right, right in that moment. So we have a center for the user page, which takes the same thing. This will be very, very similar right now. And this will just return what it says in uh, if we are not admin, right? So if we save this, we can see that it displays admin page and that's uh, working, right? So what if we change this? So let's change this to not admin. We can see that it changed the layout. So just to make that more clear, instead of displaying uh, this thing right here, we will display the name instead. So if we have the user page, we'll display the name. And if we are in a admin page, we'll display the role and the name. Yeah, yeah, let's just display the role and name, right? And actually, let's add some string interpolation right now, because this is becoming pretty horrible to read. So with string interpolation, you add a dollar sign. And if you had variables that cause um, or methods and stuff like that calls each other, so not just one single word, we add these square brackets around the uh, thing we call. And also right here. That. There we go. If we say that, so we are displaying Victor right now which is uh, because we have the not a admin. And let's just switch it back to admin. So right when I switch it back, we will see that the role is matching admin and we'll display the admin page. So we should now see the role and then um, which role he is. Or now we can see it. We'll see the role and the name that he has, right? So if I update this to admin, we can see that it switches right away to the admin page. So this is a very simple explanation of it. Uh, you can do it in multiple places. You can also have, uh, if you don't prefer stream builders, you can have methods that calls it and stores it in a variable. So you can display that variable. Uh, stream builders are very handy if you want to know that you have a, a connection to the database, right? So if we don't have a connection, we will display errors. So that was all for this tutorial. I hope you find this useful and I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, I will probably make another tutorial explaining it more in depth. Um, but let me know um, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.